Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jane and I'm so happy that you're here today. We are gonna cover ultra running shoes. So a few years ago, I made the switch to ultra running shoes specifically because I changed the way that I ran from I was a very bad heel striker to now running midfoot. And I just really did that as a way to save my body and be able to prolong running. And it's just a healthier way to run in general for a lot of people. And I knew for me as a really bad heel striker, that it was really important to make this switch. And Ultra was really the ideal running shoe for me to transition to. And so today I wanted to share with you my lineup of Ultra running shoes, the ones that I consider to be the top ones that Ultra sells, what I have as well as what the most current model is so that you can snag those or Take my tip here in a little bit for getting these a little bit cheaper. We're gonna start with my favorite recovery shoe. So for each of these shoes, I'm gonna tell you what I wear them for. So if you have watched some of my other videos that you know I talk a lot about how important easy runs are and recovery runs after those hard day efforts. So anytime that you're doing a long run or you're doing a speed session, you need to be doing a recovery run the day after to make sure you're keeping your body healthy. These are the Torin four and a half plush. They're actually going to be eliminating the four and a half plush very soon, although this is the most updated model right now that they have, that this summer they're supposed to be coming out with the Torin 5. So it's been pretty confusing because I have the regular Torin here. This is the Torin 4 and that's the plush and these are a little bit lighter. These have more cushion on the bottom. So it sounds like to make it less confusing, they're kind of combining the two, giving you the best of both worlds. So that's still gonna have a max cushioning. So what you're gonna end up with the Torin 5, a stack height of 28 millimeters. These are the heaviest shoe, um, road shoe that I have here. With the men's coming in around nine ounces, depending on the size, women's at 7.3 ounces. And this high amount of cushioning that you can see on the bottom, which makes them perfect for those recovery days. They just feel very, like the name says, plush on the bottom. I love the cushioning that I feel on those recovery days when my ankles are tired, my joints are sore, my legs are a little bit sore from putting in those hard efforts. So highly recommend those. I have been wearing the Torrens only for maybe about six months and have loved having those as part of my rotation. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the my trail running shoe. So this is the Lone Peak. I have the Lone Peak four or four and a half, I believe. And they are, they just came out with the Lone Peak five or they are going to. So with the these Lone Peaks, these are trail running shoe or they're great for snow and ice as well. In fact, the reason that I bought them originally was for snow and ice. I asked for them for Christmas one year. It's been about a year and a half that I've had these. And um, I was gonna be training for Boston and I knew that I was gonna have a lot of runs, kind of snow and ice in the area and needed something safe for that. So you can see that they have a rock plate at the bottom, these lugs on the bottom, just giving you that stability and traction and grip that you need when you're running on those rocky trails, that dirt, that snow, that ice. So the Lone Peak 5, the stack height is 25 millimeters. The weight is 11.1 ounces for men and women 9.2 ounces. And these are considered to have a moderate cushioning. Now, these are a heavier shoe. In fact, they're heavier than the road um, shoe that I just showed you of the Torin. And that doesn't really bother me. However, if I was someone who was racing a lot on the trails, I would probably go with something like the Superior, which is a little bit lower in weight. And if I were going to be going shopping soon for trail running shoes, I do not need trail running shoes. And I've already been buying a lot of shoes, so I'm not gonna get them yet. But I, it's definitely going to be a hard decision going between the Lone Peak and Superior. I'm going to make sure that I go to a running store and try them on side by side. It's hard to make a switch. I love these, but I do, um, I am intrigued by the fact that the Superiors are a little bit lighter. So just if you want to take a look at that, I would, I know those are an awesome running shoe. I have friends that use the Superior as well. All right, so next I wanna to talk to you guys about a great shoe for the gym that Ultra makes, the Solstice XT. So I actually don't have a pair of these myself, but my husband has a pair. So I grabbed those from him and wanted to share those with you because they are really, really good for heading to the gym or those short runs. So here's his pair. <laughs> he has, they are very, very well loved. You can see that from the bottoms of these. He's probably due for a new pair, but um, they're now, they've changed it now to the Solstice XT. So 
Just so you know, this is the Solstice. They changed to the Solstice XT just to kind of make it a little bit no more known that they're better for cross training. I think a lot of people were probably buying them, you know, going out for these longer runs when that's really not what they're made for. So these have a very low cushion. So you definitely can take them on those shorter runs. Um, you could try them for racing, although I would probably go with the next two that I'm going to talk about would be a better choice. But the XT has a little bit more grippy bottom than the Solstice did have before. And this is just a really, really light shoe. So highly recommend it for those gym short run days. It has a stack height of 23 millimeters. The weight is 8.4 ounces for the men, 6.7 ounces for the women. And those grid-like grooves on the bottom are just really great for flexibility and movement. All right, before I get into my last one, my love, my favorite shoe, if you guys are enjoying this video and getting value out of it, I would appreciate if you pressed the like button below. And if you are enjoying all things running, consider subscribing to this channel as well. I would love to have you here. All right, guys, so I just got these in the mail yesterday, but I have several pairs of these. It was just time for a new one. I could tell my other pair was losing that bounce a little bit. And I could just, you know, you feel those little aches that you get when you've been running in a shoe for a little bit too long. I was probably getting close to honestly the four or 500 mile mark, but this is the Escalante. And even though these are brand new, this is actually not the most recent model. So this is the Escalante 2. Um, if you want to get the most recent model, that is the Escalante two and a half. So the changes are very minimal. And I think it's important to remember that just because a company comes out with the next model doesn't mean that the next model is better than the one before. In fact, you see so many reviews sometimes where people are saying, oh, why did you change it? I love that part of it. And honestly, I've just been so, so happy this past year in the Escalante 2, and I can get them for a great price at places like Amazon, Jackrabbit. I highly recommend checking those out. And so not only am I getting a lower price, but I'm getting the shoe that I know works for me and that I love. And I'll probably move on to the two and a half here in a little bit, especially if I can get it at that lower price point. So this is actually the shoe that I moved right into when I switched to zero drop. And if you guys aren't familiar with zero drop, that just means that the back of the shoe and the front of the shoe is exactly the same. The height is exactly the same. Whereas a lot of times, or in most shoes, you'll see something like eight millimeter drop or 10 millimeter drop. That just means that the heel of the shoe is 10 or eight millimeters higher up than the front of the shoe. And so really ultra is for people who are running on a midfoot or front foot. And if you don't already do that and you are wanting to try ultras, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you acclimate to running in this shoe if you're going from heel strike to mid strike because it just places a lot of different strain on your muscles and your body just needs to acclimate. And so now this is what I love to run in. And this is guys up until, if you check out my faster at 40 um, video where I run a 5K, up until that video and that race, I had only raced in the Escalantes for the last few years. So whether that was 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons, marathons, all in the Escalante. I absolutely love this shoe but I really wanted to try out a carbon fiber plate shoe. So it was very similar, I will tell you that, but you guys will have to check out that video to find out if I really was faster in that shoe and how they stood up to this typical shoe that I've worn in the past. So this is awesome for long runs. Um, it has a mid-level of cushioning. It's great for racing. If you want something just a little bit lighter, they also have the Escalante Racer. Um, that'll have a lower cushioning though, so you wouldn't want to wear that racer for your long runs, but I know people who have worn them for their half marathon and marathon. But for me personally, this shoe I absolutely love and I cannot recommend it enough. So stack height at 24 millimeters. The weight comes in for men at eight and a half ounces, women 6.9 ounces. The cushioning is moderate, making it a great cross between something like the Solstice that I showed you that's great for the gym and that recovery shoe in the Torin and the Torin plush. All right, guys, that is my ultra lineup. I love the balanced cushioning. I love the toe box that they'll have. And I'll tell you right now, if you haven't worn ultra, it's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I can't recommend it enough. If you guys have any questions about them, please place them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them. If you have a favorite ultra shoe, I would love to hear about it. And I will talk to you guys in my next video.